And welcome to the November 2023 Planetarian Zoom seminar. Today we have Andy Krejci. Andy, how do you pronounce your last name? My dad always said Cray as in crayon, Chi as in cheese. Krejci. Great. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, we, uh, those present, we're, we're signing in uh, who we are and where we're from on the sign-in sheet. Um, Andy will be presenting about teaching in Italy and the lessons he learned. Um, he is a, an inaugural board member of uh, LIPS, which is Live Interactive Planetarium Symposium. And he's an active member of the Santa Cruz, uh, California chapter of the Dark Sky International. Um, Custom is that we stay muted when listening, especially if there's background noise in your area. But I know that Andy likes to get questions and he'll ask questions. So feel free to unmute if you have a question. Um, of course, you can put questions in the chat too. Um, I will give a reminder for any latecomers about signing into the sign-in sheet. Um, so... Um, Without further ado, I think we can hand it over to Andy. All right. So if somebody could just confirm that uh, my screen is sharing. Oh, Zoom did yes. it for me. So good. Green is sharing. Yeah. So um, I don't know how many of you read the report uh, that was published in the Planetarian. Um, I got several messages that basically summed up to uh, TLDR. <laughs> so that was the, the formal lessons I learned. Um, this is going to be a lot more casual. It's going to be more like a, um, a travel log, really. And uh, kind of you can you can come along and, uh, uh, you know, come along for the ride here. So um, as... Alan said, um, I'm not working in a planetarium. Well, he didn't say I'm not working in a planetarium, but uh, I'm involved in several things, but not in the planetarium world at the moment. Um, and uh, uh, that may or may not change. I've got a few irons in the fire, so we'll see what the, the next few months uh, bring about. There we go. So um, probably most of you by now know that the International Planetarium Society uh, has this initiative started by uh, Laura Samponi, who is here, uh, in 1995. So they've been selecting American planetarium educators to come to Italy and teach there in English. And I'm not sure when I found out about this, probably, you know, 2010s, early 2010s sometime. And I thought about it and thought about it. And it's like, wow, that would be great fun to do. And I even um, knew some colleagues that had done it. So you may recognize some of these young people, uh, just a handful of colleagues including uh, Dave, who's here. I think you're the only one here. Susan was going to try to come. And uh, man, this just sounded like a fantastic opportunity, but, you know, I never applied. And then I finally decided to apply in 2019. I was running my own portable business with a portable planetarium here in and around Santa Cruz. And uh, I was accepted. So, I got to go in 2020. At least that was the plan. So we were scheduled to leave, my wife and I, on March 16th, 2020. Um, of course, you know, a couple months in advance, I pretty much figured out this wasn't going to happen. This was uh, this is a report from uh, or an article from the day before we were supposed to leave, March 15th, 2020. And things were pretty grim in in Italy and uh, all across the world, getting worse. 
So uh, as you can probably guess, I didn't go in 2020, but Loris reassured me, oh, you can come in 2021. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not so sure about that. And the next year he said, you can come in 2022. And finally I made it, um, made it this year. So um, Alan, do you recognize this structure? That's the Campanile at UC Berkeley, uh, University of California, Berkeley. Right, I thought you'd recognize this. So I wanna introduce you to uh, a word, campanalismo. Did I say that okay, Alessandra, Loris? Campanalismo. So does anyone know what this means? So when I went to Italy, and maybe this is the main or not the only, but uh, you know, maybe the only one I'll talk about today, specifically lesson I learned is people in Italy have a lot of pride about their area. And this is the word that talks about that. And it goes back to the Campanile, which is a bell tower. So in Italy, everybody thought, okay, well, my my bell tower is the best. And, um, you know, I I admire the one in, uh, in Berkeley, but we have one in Santa Cruz. It's actually not technically a bell tower. It was a a uh, clock that was on an old building that was going to be demolished and they kind of made it into a clock and bell tower at the top there. So, so Alan and I could have arguments about, you know, who has the better bell tower, but um, that really doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, you're proud of where you are and you really represent um, your region and you're familiar with it. And that's what I really encountered in, in Italy. Uh, people identify more with where they live than the entire country, although they're proud of their country as well. And uh, any Italians on, on there that, uh, uh, when I misspoke, uh, or when I misspeak, please uh, let me know. But, uh, so, campanalismo. So, that, that's what I encountered. Everyone where I went, uh, really knowledgeable of their area and the history, and and really proud and, and eager uh, to share it. All right, we've got some polls keeping interactive here. So can you launch poll number one and let me know if I have to get out of my PowerPoint to uh, to do this, Alan? Well, we haven't tested uh, whether PowerPoint, whether it can work with PowerPoint, but let's see. Okay. The first poll is about uh, Italy's, the. let's see. There we go. Can people see this poll? I can see it. Okay. All right. So quickly submit your answers. And then I think Alan will share the results. And I see Loris uh, chuckling over there. <laughs> I think I think he he probably got the answer right. Are you able to share share the results there? Um, I think that I need to end the poll and then maybe oh, I Oh, there you go. Yeah. It. Should I do that? Yeah, it should it'd only take one mouse click to Looks answer. like nobody voted for Liechtenstein. No? Oh, well, we got a smart group here. Uh, can you see the results now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. You got it right. I guess technically what I've read is Croatia shares a, a border over the water with Italy, but not a land border. So uh, I guess, you know, Croatia, if you wanted to stretch it, would be right. But uh, no, France, uh, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia are the the countries that uh, border Italy. So there we go. All right. Moving on. All right, so here's a, a map of Italy so you can see where Slovenia is. And one of the disappointments, I wasn't able to go to Gorizia like um, like Dave was. Um, Gorizia is right on the border and you can actually walk into um, Slovenia from, uh, from there. I guess the city's right on the border. So um, most of where I was, was 
from just north of Rome to the north. So here's another map of Italy. Um, maybe you haven't seen this one, but this is by average pizza size. So since I was kind of towards the north, um, I guess where I was, they tend to have medium to larger size pizza, if this map is accurate. I, I have no idea whether this is accurate or not. All right, so here's where I was. Let's see if this annotating feature, let's see, spotlight, laser pointer. Let's try spotlight. So I started off in Florence here. That's not very clear. Okay, well, I'll figure that out. Anyway, we started off in Florence, my wife and I. Uh, thanks to my sister-in-law, we we got a uh, deluxe airline tickets to go over. And this is a pretty familiar view of Florence. Looking at the Arno, on the right you have the kind of main tourist area of Florence, uh, where the Duomo is. We're looking at the Ponte Vecchio in the foreground, that first bridge. And then on the left is where we stayed on the Ultra Arno, which is the other side of the Arno. Now, my son likes to go to auctions and thrift stores, and he found a box of photos from some world traveler from like probably around 1960 who had taken a bunch of pictures in Italy and Greece, in Africa, all over the place. And um, he had a roll of 36 slides that he'd taken in Florence. So I decided to kind of try to recreate some of these scenes while I was in Florence. So that was Florence 1960. Here's Florence in uh, 2023 in the spring. So this is the Piazza Spirito Santo uh, in the Oltrano. Here's a, a gate when I was going to take that picture from up above, from the Piazzallo uh, Michelangelo, so 1960 and today, a little bit more crowded, as you might expect. And here's the uh, Plaza Michelangelo, a lot more crowded. And this was on a weeknight in the spring, not in the height of the tourist season. So it seems like it's compulsory if you uh, if you go to Italy to to teach, uh, like so many people have done over the last uh, 20, 25 years, uh, you got to go to the Museo Galileo. So this is from the Museo Galileo. This uh, sphere that you're looking at is based on the Ptolemaic system with the Earth in the center. Uh, Pretty remarkable craftsmanship. And this museum just kind of blew me out of the water. Uh, my wife kind of got on overload, but uh, I was just trying to soak up everything. So if you're into globes, if you're into maps, so here's a celestial globe here. Another one showing the same area, you know, looking at Orion and Taurus there. This is a tiny little thing. Any guesses what this might be? This is only about three inches tall. This is a a uh, gunner gunner's level. So you know, unfortunately, science advances the uh, tools of war too. But uh, uh, pretty remarkable the craftsmanship um, of everything I saw. So here's a, an incline plane. You know, this is some of famous Galileo's famous experiments. So this beautiful wood and brass. And uh, I was just so impressed by this because, you know, in America, we just go to Home Depot and get MDF and, you know, we're done. So if you've ever done any uh, solar system walks for a scale solar system model of the solar system, I have a plastic one, one of these things, um, you know, a pedometer where you can just kind of roll the wheel and you can measure how far you've gone. So here's an, uh, early model of that. Uh, you can see in the reflection in the glass, there's some these really 
delicate glass thermometers with these uh, really skinny tubes that go up for, you know, two or three feet. I don't even know how these survived for centuries, but um, just the, the level of detail and craftsmanship was mind blowing. So uh, you're probably thinking, I'll show you a picture of Galileo's finger. Here's a solar mi solar powered microscope. So I've read several people who want to see Galileo's finger. I did see Galileo's finger in the museum, but uh, I decided to show some other body parts. So uh, my wife, April, was particularly fascinated with these in the museum. So these were molds made of actual people. So these were women and children who died in childbirth. And this was showing what was happening. So here's a baby with uh, the cord wrapped around it. It would never you know, survive childbirth uh, at that time. And so this was made of ceramic. I forget what the material on the right, this, these are a little bit more modern, uh, but showing a forceps delivery. Um, Pretty remarkable stuff. So uh, April's not way into museums. So we we uh, took our time to kind of walk around the neighborhoods. And this is the Boboli Gardens um, in Florence. Uh, huge Italian garden for acres and acres. You know, do a lot of walking there. All right. So that brings us to poll number two. Because I haven't even started teaching in Italy yet. Helen? Okay, that would be the uh, ge geography. Yeah, testing your knowledge again. Is that it? That's it. Oh, I better answer. I hope you guys are having fun with this. This is that's the point. I see a lot of stone faces out there. <laughs> There's uh <clears throat> people changing their minds. Here. Oh no. I'm just guessing him all the all the time here. <laughs> yeah. No, Sean's here. Sean's a, a veteran. So yeah, please speak up if you have any uh commentary about Galileo's finger or your experience in Italy, especially uh, people like Sean. Uh, I don't know, Dave may may have left already. I, I know a lot of you. Uh, can't be there, but feel free to interrupt. I, I can just say it was a really great experience, um, and I've been lucky enough to both uh, participate in, in, you know, in in doing the program in Italy. But then this last summer, I hosted um, uh, an Italian here in Maine uh, as part of the international, and that was that was wonderful too. So both both are really great, and I, I highly recommend people putting in for the program and, and taking advantage of this. It's really a great, great experience. Everything from the wonderful food and wine and hospitality of, of your host to getting, you know, sort of immersed in a little bit of culture. And yeah, I, I highly, highly recommend it. No, thanks for reciprocating there, Sean. That's, that's great that you've done that. Okay, how about the results here? Do we see it? We see it. Montana is totally out of it. Montana's out. Montana's not not that far off. So what is the correct answer? Well, moving on. What what is the correct answer? The uh, correct correct answer is New Mexico. Uh, it's kind of right in between New Mexico and Arizona in. Uh, square miles, or if we're talking um, square kilometers, okay, I got to practice my Italian here. Trecento mila trecento quaranta kilometri quadrati. How did I do, Elena? She's laughing at me, or no, maybe no, she's no, laughing no, with no, me. 
<laughs> no, no, you're great. Yeah, large numbers are hard in in um, Italian, but um, I'm going to focus on uh, the quaranta. So that's for you Americans. That's uh, three hundred and one thousand. Um, what is it? It was on the last slide, wasn't it? Yeah, three hundred one thousand three hundred and forty square kilometers. But focus on that word quaranta, forty. Uh, that's where we get the, the word quarantine. So used to be when boats came into uh, Venice on the in the Adriatic, um, they'd come from all these far off places and they would have to stay there for 40 days just to make sure um, they wouldn't infect the population before they came in. So kind of pertinent to COVID. Okay, I got to roll around here because I've got so many pictures to show you here. So let me try a, a better color for, so we were in, where's Florence? Okay, Florence here. Now we're gonna go to Perugia. <clears throat> so we were in Florence for about, I think three and a half days. And the program was to start in Perugia on a Monday. I think we got there on a Friday, early afternoon. So on to Perugia. And a lot of you folks probably recognize her. This is Simonetta. Now, before I went to Italy, you know, I was imagining, okay, what will be like, you know, teaching the kids and how will the English be? And, you know, thinking about all the time I spend teaching and, you know, eating, of course, and exploring. But you know, a lot of valuable time, a lot of wonderful time was spent in this little red car with Simonetta. Um, so I was in staying in Perugia for four days, um, but three of those days I was teaching in Assisi. So every morning she would pick me up at around eight o'clock and we'd have the half hour drive to Assisi, we'd spend the day together there and then half hour drive back. So we have some wonderful um, conversations in the car. Um, Simonetta is just a, a very wonderful person who's you know been doing astronomy education pretty much her whole life. So very, very enjoyable to, to talk with her. So here's the, oh, I gotta lose that red line there. Sorry about that. So here's the school in Assisi. I wrote in my report uh, about something that happened in America the first day I went there. Uh, I came home and read the New York Times and there was this awful school shooting. And so one thing Italian students don't have to worry about is school shooting. So when I show you these Italian students, um, yeah, I don't know. I just was kind of, thinking it's so wonderful to have students that don't have to have uh, that sort of terror in the back of their minds. So um, that's one one big difference in the culture that I would say is a, a much uh, uh, improvement on what uh, happens in America here. But here are these students, and this was this hall that we did uh, most of my um, activities in. Well, one certain activity, and I don't have many pictures of me doing it because I was doing it at the time, so I didn't take pictures of it, but I've got one later that'll show you. This is a human orrery that I can talk about or you can ask about, but um, one of the things I really like doing with students is um, leaving them with souvenirs. So for me, having something physical that reminds you of an experience um, is really important. So at the end of each uh, class, I would uh, put out these stickers. These are these NASA travel poster stickers, uh, different exoplanets and planets in our solar system. And they could you know, spend a couple minutes choosing which one they wanted. Also had some uh, New Horizons stickers from Pluto. And while at the school, had wonderful food. So. You know, I don't, I don't know. They don't have tater tats in Italy, that's for sure. 
So this is the cafeteria at the school uh, lining up. Uh, I let my host know ahead of time, hey, I've got celiac disease, I can't eat wheat, you know, so pasta's out, um, bread's out. Um, they were so accommodating every single place I went, every restaurant, because um, working at a restaurant is an absolute profession in Italy. So every restaurant, they were very, very attentive to this. And uh, it was just not an issue. It was just a non-issue. And I talked about the craftsmanship and all the stuff in the, uh, all the exhibits in the uh, Galileo Museum. This is just the floor of the teacher's lunchroom at this school. And I just thought it was gorgeous. There we have Simonetta um, in the center. That's Emanuele, who was one of her students when he was in high school. And now he's a teacher himself and Annalisa, the, the head of the school. So I did many, many programs here. Um, and time was tight. We only had 55 minutes, so I had to squeeze a lot in. Um, other places I, were a little bit more flexible, but they were on their schedule. So uh, did many, many uh, programs in that in that particular school uh, on three different days. And these are just some scenes from Assisi. Beautiful, beautiful town. It's you know close to me. We have Carmel, where you know things are um, very particular. You know you just can't you know put up a uh, addition to your house, everything needs to fit in. And Simonetta described that, you know, they have to use the stones from a certain quarry. So the look of this place is just remarkable. And it really just kind of takes you, takes your breath away. So uh, this is home base in Perugia. So this is a view, I think, if I'm not mistaken, looking towards Assisi, but from um, uh, Perugia. Some night scenes from Perugia. And any Italians there want to tell me, is there a word in Italian for just kind of doing this, hanging out on the steps of the church here and taking in the air, taking in the sun, having a conversation? I know there's a, a special word for like walking around at night and just kind of talking, but um, this is just quintessentially Italian. And I, I need to do this more, uh, uh, just hanging out and uh, just being uh, somewhere and not having something else to do. So um, yeah, if if uh, I can take any way anything away from my trip to Italy, I I, I want to be more like Italians in this uh, in this particular manner. All right, so I've got way too many slides, so I've, I've got to kind of. Uh, go through these quickly, but uh, please feel free to interrupt. This was a one the one class I taught in Perugia uh, was one of Simonetta's uh, science classes that she teaches to a group of homeschool students that you can see here. This is the other side of the room where the teachers are. That was a lot more casual um, because we just had all the time in the world. So uh, really enjoyed conversing with these Italian students. And this is a class uh, before I actually started teaching the day before, I think this is on Sunday, where uh, Simonetta taught a class at this uh, um, grassy piazza, you know, next to this church and had kids come and do solar observing and whatnot. And then in the evening, we went into Shiri Tower. So that's what you see there on the left and the inside of it. Lots of step up, steps up to get there. But uh, fortunately, we were lugging a telescope and telescope parts and all sorts of things. We didn't take, have to take those all the way up. We took them to, uh, you know, maybe uh, a third of the way up. And then they have this kind of block and tackle system to take it the rest of the way. So um, I guess there were quite a few of these medieval towers in Perugia, but uh, this is one of the only ones left. And then this is kind of looking back towards that grassy piazza next to the church where the class was held before. And we had uh, pizza dinner in a restaurant at, inside the base of, uh, of the tower afterwards. So this is what you're in store if you for if you go to Italy uh, as part of this program. So here's a shot I took from 
Simonetta's balcony, looking back at Perugia up on the hill. And while I was taking this picture, she said, oh, so many pictures have been taken from this balcony because she's hosted so many people over the years. So I forget who these are all from. I think this one might be from Kevin Milani. I think this might be from Krista Ghent. And this is Steve Case a few years ago who, uh, who went there. So um, kind of a long history with this program. So I felt so so honored to be chosen and to you know take part in this kind of legacy of uh, Americans coming and um, learning from Simonetta and and being held in such high regard, you know, um, you know, coming and valuing the information you give and the teaching style that you have. So uh, very grateful for for the experience. Where we stayed in an Airbnb. There were all sorts of uh, books related to the area. And this is a picture of a solar eclipse in Perugia in 1961, which in one of my conversations with Simonetta, she recalled seeing this eclipse as a, as a, as a young girl. All right, poll number three. I'm doing too much talking. I was hoping to have more questions, but we'll get you interacting this way. Alan? Okay, this will be a um, population question. No, Jeff and Ann, hi. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with a bunch of planetarium folks. Okay, so everybody answered? Another wild guess. Another wild guess, yeah. <laughs> That's a hard one. Uh, share the result? Yeah. You snooze, you lose. No, pretty good. Yeah, the answer is South Africa. So I think it's interesting. Italy has a population of 58, 59 million. And uh, the tourists it was supposed to get this year, I think they predicted there'd be like 68 million. So uh, more than the population visits uh, Italy every year, which is kind of incredible to think about. All right. So I'm not too good with this uh, pointer here. I hope I'm better. Last, last month, the session was about pointers in the planetarium. I'm lousy with them on Zoom. So here we can see Perugia and Assisi. From there, Simonetta drove us down right about here. I forget how long the drive was, maybe an hour and a half or so. And this was the next stop. It was a, a new one for the program. And it was in the town of Amelia, or right outside the town of Amelia. So... And this is a pretty unique place. This is a Franciscan convent with a planetarium. So this is, you know, maybe three kilometers outside of Amelia. So it's out in the country. This is looking back towards Amelia on the hill there, uh, on the left of the screen. This is looking down the driveway, going towards the convento. And this is this is it. So pretty impressive place. Um, it's not been in 
been there in this form, but it's been there in some form since the 12th century. So um, I think most of the buildings were 17th and 18th centuries with, you know, something mixed in. And, you know, it's kind of a hard thing when you're in Europe sometimes to tease out the history because there's so much history on top of history on top of history. But um, a very peaceful, beautiful, beautiful place. This is from, from the Convento looking back, down from where I took the last picture. Uh, this is a field where they grow lentils and garbanzo beans uh, that we ate at dinner. Spring, so some flowers were coming out. And here's uh, one host handing us off to the other. So Simonetta was our first host and Fra Andrea Frigo was our second host. Wonderful, wonderful guy. And uh, in the basement, he took us on a tour. They have all these old farm implements. So it's kind of like touring a museum and, uh, um, you know, talking about the history of, of uh, how the property was maintained over the, over the years and centuries, actually. No, oh, this is out of place, but this is from the museum. This is an al old alcohol meter. I think uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. So here we see some posters up on their church, including Un Planetarista, that's me, uh, and what I was going to be doing while I was there. So we were in Perugia for four days uh, and Amelia for three. So on Friday, we were visited by several middle school classes. This is, this is them. This is them outside the planetarium, which is the old hay barn for the, uh, for the facility. So the, the planetarium was put in there in the 1980s. Uh, the friar that got it going passed away I think around 2015. So it hadn't been used for some time. And then Fra Andrea, who's a brilliant guy, he's worked in particle physics and you know got this calling when he was in Assisi actually to become a Franciscan friar. And uh, he got it back going again and it's amazing. So the, the planetarium's in front, this is a kind of 360 photo. So it's kind of, uh, you're looking behind you if you look way over to the left almost to the the rest of the convent on the the uh, bottom floor there's a museum that uh, he's set up but we had a very le long leisurely time with these middle school students they arrived you know mid morning and stayed till the afternoon so i did several activities with them fra andrea um, gave him a slideshow of his trip recent trip to iceland where he saw the aurora and this is the, the science museum that was just opened, I think, for a, a few months. His, uh, Fra Andrea is just a, an amazing guy, and he, he put this whole thing together. So he collected all these samples from all these different Franciscan facilities and put together a museum. And in a lot of ways, because it was just so intimate, you you know, you just walk in there and look at everything. <laughs> Nobody else is there. It's so quiet and peaceful. Um, in a way, it was almost better than the Museo Galileo. And, you know, important reminder that, you know, we always talk about religion versus science, but um, the Franciscans have been involved in science and the teaching of science for, for many years. So here's some chemical samples. Uh, botanical samples, old, uh, I don't know if it's a dinosaur bone, I forget what kind of bone that was, but uh, anyway, um, the next day we were able to go to town and also uh, there was a teacher workshop, so this is one of the teachers doing some solar viewing, and here's a better look at the planetarium and some of the teachers that attended. And, you know, we got to hang out with all the friars. So, you know, you saw how big the building was, you know, I I don't remember how many uh, friars were living there in its heyday, but certainly 50, 100, maybe more. And uh, this is it right now. So it's Fra Andrea, uh, Fra Rocco, 
Fra Massimo, Fra Stefano, and I forget the last one, but um, um, it was really touching to be able to kind of live their life with them for a few days. We had our meals together. And again, having these great conversations over our meals in this quiet, echoey dining hall and, you know, helping out with the dishes and that sort of thing. And it uh, it wasn't just, you know, a piece of bread and some soup. There were several courses and I can't show you the food because most of it's eaten. <laughs> and Patrizia, a local woman who helps out with some of the cooking on uh, on weekends. And I'd taken some Italian classes and I totally failed my Italian teachers because I could not get much communication uh, across with Patrizia. I, I felt bad about that, but um, maybe I'll practice up some more and go back again because uh, Fra Andrea was uh, very eager to have me come back. Okay, so that was Amelia out in the country. Keep you on your toes, ask you some more questions. Okay, this one is about words. Italian words. So there are some Italian words that mean the same thing in English, and some are very different. I don't know how long people need to think, but uh, we can probably close it pretty soon here. Okay. Ah, very good. Yep. What does uh, camera mean? Anybody? Italian or American, doesn't matter. I Tell us what camera means in uh, Italian. I can explain if you want. Please. Thank you, Elena. Uh, camera in English. I think I pronounced it correctly, but in case <laughs> correct me. A camera is the thing you use to take photos. Whereas in Italian, camera is a bedroom. Very good. Okay. So I'm sure there, that's been source of much confusion and many jokes. And let me erase that mark. Okay, and move on. All right, so, you know, we had a leisurely time in Perugia four days and three days in Emilia, and then things start to get a little bit compressed. So we got up early, early, early on a Sunday morning. And I said we were down near Terni. Those that's where the um that's where the students were from that visited the uh, planetarium. So we took a train all the way back to Florence, up to Bologna, and then over to Ravenna. Am I saying that right, Elena? Ravenna. Yes. Um, you say that around here and people don't know what you're talking about because it's, it's Ravenna. So um, that was our next stop. So here's the early morning train, side, train ride. We got to see the sunrise. And because it was a Sunday, we had, or I had no teaching responsibilities. So our exceedingly generous hosts um, hired a private tour guide to take us over all the way through Ravenna. And Tim, my old uh, college professor, who was online but had to leave, um, he's the one that really got me going about Ravenna. I took these humanities courses and we studied some of these churches and, you know, kind of probably tell there's kind of a different style of the church. So this was the, a lot of Eastern uh, influences and Byzantine 
influences. So uh, a very, very different place than, um, than other parts of, of Italy. And famous, famous, famous for its uh, mosaics. So um, there's rows and rows of all these people depicted up on the, the church. Oh, I think I'm pointing, but I'm not. Along here and along here. Um, one side is all men, the other side is all women. You don't see that typically in uh, a Catholic church, but uh, the early church was actually a lot more open to women and uh, kind of more liberal ideas. And so Roberta, our tour guide, was explaining how, uh, you know, this changed, but, you know, the women are still up there, but certain things that weren't... Um, weren't necessarily as accepted by the Catholic Church were erased. They did their version of Photoshop. So there'd be these mosaic where it's like, well, that that sky doesn't look quite right. And she'd explain, well, no, that you know, something was there and they they uh, they decided to take it out. Um, so, you know, rewriting history is nothing new. So this is uh, the San Francesco, the, the Church of San, Fr San Francesco. So um, like Venice, Ravenna is thinking uh, about, I think it's, I don't know, six to nine inches or whatever that translates to centimeters every year. So uh, it's in kind of marshland. It used to be on the coast. And uh, this is a crypt in this church that uh, has seawater. Uh, in it, and they, they there's there's fish. I didn't get any uh, in my photo, but you'll have a limited time to take a look at this and take a photo. You put a, a euro coin into a little slot, and um, and you get to have the light on and and peek in here. So uh, Andy, pretty remarkable. Andy? But, yeah. Oh, you erased the red line. That's good. Yeah. I uh, I wanted to mention that uh, Joe Jordan put something in the chat that was interesting. Oh, um, sure. That he 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 would. This was his parting shot. He was leaving. <laughs> he said there was a scene a while back, a painting of plaza and people, with a crescent moon, way wrong. He said, check out the shadows of the people and a roof line to see where the sun was. The geometry. Well, aside from the difficulty of seeing such a thin crescent moon in the daylight, he says he has no problem with it, but it's just fun lurking with what's wrong with this picture for yeah stuff. i'm surprised i'm i'm not sure what he's talking about because i i i'm usually the ones that's you know those yeah. things bug me but uh, i'll have to go back and look yeah okay so this is the uh mausoleum of gala placidia um she was a a woman i forget what century fourth century i think and these are all mosaics, all these different patterns. So the starry sky with the cross, um, these kind of floral patterns, and some of the stars look a lot like uh, like the flowers. Whoops. And you know, in the center, going across, all those different colors creates kind of a, a 3D pattern. And I don't know if you can make it out a fairly familiar shape if i can draw it here the swastika which of course is not german but it's a sanskrit word and it was actually an ancient peace sign before uh, it got co-opted so um, all these different patterns are in here. And it's just amazing. You know, I kind of get overwhelmed and when there are too many things and, and uh, you know, it seems like it might be busy in the photo, but you can just get lost in this place. Um, I, I could spend days there actually, just focusing on, on one pattern or the other with these intricate mosaics. And um, it doesn't feel busy. It's a very, very interesting phenomenon. With all that's going on in there, it's remarkably peaceful uh, place. So I, I was just thrilled 
thrilled to go to Ravenna at all. Uh, again, my old college professor had said, if you ever go to Italy, he told me this in 1980 or whatever, um, forget about Venice, forget about Rome, go to Ravenna, Ravenna. And here's April. Again, the generosity of our hosts. They, uh, Marco, who runs the planetarium, uh, his sister runs a mosaic workshop. So April got to make her own mosaic. Uh, Dante's big in Florence because that's where he lived. Dante's also big in Ravenna because that's where he died. And uh, here we've got some folks here at another wonderful meal. We went to this restaurant twice. That's Marco in the beard. He runs the planetarium in Ravenna. Here he is on this fantastic uh, wall, this one wall of the planetarium that has a lot going on with the uh, different sundials and uh, indicators on it. So this is a mosaic on the floor in um, one of the churches. I think this is San Vitale. Um, almost felt guilty walking on these beautiful mosaics, but in the planetarium itself, we also have mosaics. So the, I think the, the planetarium was built in the 80s, so they, they did these um, zodiac symbols on the floor. I thought it was nice. So here's, for the planetarium nerds, a, a Zeiss 1980s era projector. And if you see, okay, I gotta annotate again. This little thing sticking out of here is this thing in the inset photo on the right. Any idea what that is for? That is actually for programming uh, the planetarium projector. So you, you know, early form of programming in the 1980s, you would have these plastic cards and you'd take a pair of pliers and put gaps and that's that's your ones and your zeros for programming the planetarium equipment. So I thought that was pretty cool. And Zeiss no longer um, no longer services these. So Marco's kind of on his own as far as uh, keeping this equipment maintained. Now, I recognize this instantly because I'm from Santa Cruz, California. And if you see, this headset has the word Plantronics on it. Plantronics was a huge industry in um, Santa Cruz for many, many years. And um, they built these headsets that went on the Apollo missions to the moon. So they, they had a sample of one of these headsets along with uh, these samples of the Saturn V rocket on the right and the... Uh, Oh yeah, the uh, the LEM computer on the right, the interface for the LEM on the left. And these are all made out of cardboard that I, I think they must have ordered these in the eighties when uh, NASA was selling these things, but uh, very cool uh, replicas. And another group of middle school students. Um, I think that was one class that arrived early and then uh, another one came and uh, I spent very little time in the classroom. I give a little PowerPoint, tell them about Santa Cruz, tell them about me, and then, then we get involved in doing our activities. I, I'm uncomfortable talking right now because not enough of you are talking, and I'm the same way with uh, students. I want them to be asking questions and have them doing things. So uh, this was the uh, activity, additional activity I brought besides the orrery. Uh, I taught this to the teachers at a couple teacher workshops. This is a very simple shadow activity where the students predict where the shadow will be in a certain time. Um, and you can see they did pretty well with their predict predictions there. All right, on to Brescia. So from Ravenna. We went, I think, back to Bologna and then up to Brescia. And that is where Loris, who uh, created the program and still uh, 
administrates the program, that's where he's based. So I finally got to meet Brescia, or not meet Brescia, meet uh, Loris after uh, talking to him for so many years in wait for my trip. So this is the activity. This is in the, the theater in Lumazane, which is about 30 minutes uh, up into the foothills of the Alps. Um, and these are Alessandra, who's with us, her high school students, um, acting like the sun and the four inner planets of the solar system, where I kind of take them through this whole activity where um, they, they act out the orbits of the, uh, the planets over the course of a year, uh, four months at a time. So I get them moving, I get them explaining, uh, spend a lot of time with the Earth, uh, since we're used to seeing this kind of exploded view of the solar system in books, but how does it relate to how we th see things on Earth? So I spend a lot of time with the person portraying the Earth, and uh, they can explain, okay, which way does the Earth rotate? What planets do we see at night and when, uh, when, this, uh, when this model is presented? Those are some crazy looking ellipses there. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, not necessarily accurate. So there's Loris. I I waited for three years to bring him this uh, sweatshirt from Santa Cruz. This is a famous icon of Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz skateboards who are celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. So uh, he'll fit right in when he comes to Santa Cruz wearing that thing and, uh, and Alessandra. And, you know, I, I really didn't spend much time teaching in planetariums, but I got a tour of many. You know, when we were in Ravenna, um, I saw the planetarium, but we, we didn't do anything in the planetarium. I did participate in a public program at the planetarium at the Convento in Amelia. Um, but this is the small planetarium at the high school in Lumazane, where I um, they just took me to, to see it on the way to... Um, the observatory uh, above the city of Lumazane. So um, Loris was in a rush to get me uh, uh, get me going after we did our presentation because uh, you got to get, get to the observatory by sunset and, and we made it, but just barely. And this is such an incredible memory um, after we toured the observatory uh, overlooking uh, Lumazane at night. That's looking kind of towards the interior and then um, down back towards Brescia, I believe. Uh, what a magical moment that was. Yeah, it was just in incredible. And this was kind of running towards the end of our time because I only spent uh, less, than a, less than 24 hours in Brescia and Lumazane. And the last day was here at uh, La Torre del Sole, uh, Tower of the Sun. This is a science center in Brembate di Sopra, which is a suburb of Bergamo. On the left, it doesn't look like it, but it's an old water tower that was converted into a solar telescope. So you know, they built this structure around it and they built a tower on the right side so you could get to the, uh, get to the solar telescope in the old water tower. Here's the interior. This is Marzia, our host there, with Billy, uh, trying to get it working right before a school group came. If you've ever been in that situation where, uh-oh, things aren't working and we've got a school group coming in 10 minutes, that's what uh, was going on there. So there's the, the solar telescope gets reflected down this cent central tube um, that used to carry water. Uh, to an observing room, which I think I have a picture of, and then there's a conventional telescope up in the uh, dome as well. And here's where they host school groups in the bottom. And I had a really impressive picture with, with uh, showing the spectrum and I couldn't find it, but, uh, but this is a school group that we interacted with there. These are elementary, I think these are fifth grade students. But we also had time for coffee. And I'm not a coffee drinker, but I started in Italy, and I think I, I was that was going to be my last slide, slide showing how awful the, 
the coffee is in America because uh, it's hard to find a good cup here. So Billy and Marzia, they're very, very serious director at La Torre del Sole. Uh, very dour guy, as you can see. And uh, yeah, some of their crew there. Yeah, there's a whole lot of camaraderie there. I mean, I, I've missed that. You know, I, that's what I love about uh, the planetarium community and going to conferences is most of my career has been spent as a solo artist, I would say. So um, being able to um, talk with people and uh, see what they're doing and get tips from them, wonderful. And this is the conclusion of our trip to Italy. Final meal that night, Marzia was kind enough to drive us half an hour, 45 minutes up in the mountains. And this is in the, the town of San Pellegrino. I'm sure you've drank their water before. And our last poll. Okay, this poll would be the one that is postcards. Let's see. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, I forgot to put that screenshot. So I'm I'm a member of a group that's that uh, sends and receives uh, postcards uh, to people all over the world, and. Um, so I'm kind of a postcard junkie. And uh, I send a lot of postcards on my trip. So you get to guess how many. I don't see it yet, Alan. Oh, uh, I guess I need to press the launch button. Sorry. Let me try that again. Okay, polls back. Uh, well, I see the poll myself, but I'm no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, we can skip it, it's fine. And I've gone over time anyway. Hey, I like those polls. That was fun. Although maybe you I, have to go back to share screen. Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Oh. Oh yeah, that was um. Yeah, I don't see a way to launch it now. Oh. Okay, I'm sharing screen again. Okay, let me try. Okay, this is an interesting uh thing to learn about zoom okay so there's italian words sharing huh it's not letting me launch it sorry all right that's fine anyway well i'll, I'll give it away i don't maybe you have a number in your head but um uh we were in italy for you know two weeks plus and then uh, a little less than a week in the Netherlands and then a little less than a week in Scotland. So we were go gone for a full month and I sent 75 postcards in that time. And some of you on here may have gotten one. I don't know. Anyway, I apologize for going over. Um, I'd love to give an opportunity so, for some of the Italians to talk or um, uh, some of our veterans of going to Italy. Uh, it's kind of more of a travel log than um, anything else, but uh, if you have any specific questions about the activities or, or whatnot, but uh, I cannot recommend this experience highly enough, um, you know, for the food, for the culture, for the history, but, uh, you know, mainly for the wonderful people. Well, Andy, we don't have, there is no actual time limit on these seminars, but, um, you know, it doesn't have to be an hour. But I'd like to say that this has been a really neat tour of Italy and an interesting. I've always wondered what happened in these uh, uh, teaching in Italy uh, uh, programs. And uh, so I want to thank you for that. And I and everybody, if you want to unmute and give a round of applause, this would be an appropriate time to do that. And we can do question and answers, too. Yeah, that was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. It's great, Andy. Not as much fun as going there, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, everyone should apply. Uh, uh, there's no no excuse for not applying. I I regret putting it off for so many years, but I'm also the mind that it happened in the right way. And, you know, waiting three years made it even that, that much sweeter to actually go. Well, you can always come back. Oh, I plan to. Yeah, I mean, I saw all these planetariums and the wonderful observatory in Lumazane, and it's like, I didn't really get a chance to talk about, you know, the research they're doing up there. And, you know, even just exploring the website for the observatory, it's, it's tremendous how much how great stuff you're, you guys are doing there. Rosemary. Yeah, I would Amanda. like to, oh, sorry. Okay. I would, I only, to, uh, to thanks to, to Andy for this uh, wonderful presentation. I think that it will be very useful also for our colleague and uh, I hope that it will be available permanent on the web, Alan, I, I suppose. Uh, yes, yes, the recording will be up within a day uh, on okay. the PPA web, the PPA uh, seminar. Okay, perfect, perfect, YouTube, because YouTube it will be chat. very useful. Yeah, I'll, I, I will share with the colleague. I announce it to the DOMEL and PPA whenever it's ready. And I'll send you the link. Wonderful job. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I will say, um, you know, I, I didn't get to go to Gorizia, but Ravenna, Ravenna was a new site. Amelia was a new site. And Rambate, my last stop, was also a new site. So it changes according to people's schedules and whatever Loris has to go through every year. So um, it, yeah, it, it depends, I guess, year to year. Rosemary, why don't you ask your question? Uh, so I'm just curious about the students. Were they more like from our private schools or our public schools? Or did you have some of both? Uh, yeah, it was it was definitely a mix. Um, the the school in Assisi where I taught, you know, more lessons than anywhere else. Um, I think that was a pretty... Uh, uh you know high level school uh they have um boarding they board students there too some not all of them but um um but quite a few um but across the board their english school skills were tremendous so uh it was mainly high school uh we had middle school in amelia but ev even there their their english was wonderful um, and even in Brambate, when we interacted with these fifth graders, they hadn't taken English yet, but they were, there was this one girl who had great English. And so we asked her, well, where did you learn English so well? And uh, she said, YouTube. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I really wanted to learn about Italian culture and, you know, they asked me, well, what's your favorite basketball team? And, <laughs> you know, questions like that. But, uh, but very, very charming um, students for the most part. And, you know, middle schoolers are middle schoolers everywhere. You know, they were goofy, their attention span maybe lagged a little bit. Uh, but uh, one of the experiences I wrote about in Amelia, these middle schoolers, um, arrived and Fra Andrea said, tell us your name and tell us what is your dream. And so they were they were saying, okay, um, I want to be an engineer or, you know, <laughs> one guy wanted to run a coffee bar. Um, you know, so it was interesting getting uh, a view inside in, inside these you know, young people's heads and, you know, uh, what they were thinking about for their own future. We just had a, another, there have been a few people who are from, who have been in the program and, and uh, Dee just put in the chat that she was there in Brescia in uh, 1998, 25 years ago. Uh, Dave, Dave, um,
was here. Dave, <laughs> Dave Weinrich. Yeah, Dave, Dave Weinrich. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Dave Weinrich uh, was here and he had to leave too. Um, so there have been people coming in and leaving. That's kind of interesting. Sean, did you want to say something about your experience? Well, I, I think I mentioned a little bit before. I just, it was really wonderful. I ended up doing, um, yeah, Perugia, CZ, uh, Brescia, and Gorizia were the, the three sites I did. Um, and they also, I, I was able to go out to, um, Loris, correct me if I'm saying this wrong, Aquileia, which was uh, the city of sundials. Uh, that was really spectacular. There were so many sundials. Um, it was just a beautiful, beautiful place that uh, uh, the hosts in uh, Grizia took me out to and uh, all these different sundials of all different types. And there was even a like a little uh, in the library there. They even had a mechanical contraption for yeah. displaying how sundials work. Um, that was really spectacular, too. So I, I, I yeah, I highly recommend it to everyone, you know, and I, I think um, it's just the people are are wonderful. You 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 develop these relationships and. You know, and it's it's just really wonderful. I've I've seen Perugia, you know, I've been to Perugia a number of times before and after because I, I I've known Simona through through other IPS connections, but you know, just ended up spending a lot of time with her, particularly afterwards, and and you know, uh, and getting getting there. So Italy is is very special in in my life anyway because my wife and I got married there, and that's you know a long term goal is to to spend more time there, and uh, we. Uh, might have an announcement about that coming up next year. We'll see. We've got some stuff in the works. Um, for you. But, um, but uh, yeah, it wouldn't be full time or anything like that. But uh, spending a little more time there, you know, on 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 our di our, our downtime. But yeah, it's 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 just a wonderful wonderful pace. The people are great, um, and they take such good care of you. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend it. Um, and, and Sean, uh, didn't you also go to the Isa Isinga Planetarium afterwards? Or was that a different trip? That was different. That was when I lived in the Netherlands. I, mm -hmm. I, I lived in Groningen for a couple of years. And um, so then, yeah, I, during my time living there, I went over to Eis Um So, yeah, yeah. So which I, I, I also highly recommend. I went there after Italy. It was in mm -hmm. my written report, but this is a, just become a world a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it's the old, oldest working uh, orrery, yeah. uh, mechanical orrery. And uh, yeah, it was just really kind of the the cherry on on top, you know, uh, icing on the cake, whatever metaphor you want to use. Mm -hmm. um, after going to Italy and bringing this uh, activity, where you know you're explaining to kids, okay, this is how the solar system works, and you know, in a way that they can intuit and experience, and you know, that's what this orrery was built for in, you know, 1700s as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that, that was just a remarkable experience as well. I have, so, uh, I have three questions. Yeah. Oh, Sean. Oh, one last thing, since you mentioned Eis Eisinga, uh, one of my uh, former colleagues from Groningen actually is, is submitting an article to the planetarian uh, upcoming uh, to the planetarian about um, sort of creating your own little orries like that and what he did and it, it started off because he was asked to film in there and he actually filmed and and uh, filmed some stuff in full dome inside that uh, facility um, inside the mechanical workings of of Eis Eisinga. Um but he now he's submitting an article to the planetarian so keep your eye out for that if you particularly I think Andy will like that because it's a cool little thing about it. Fantastic. Um, I, my, I have a question, Lor Loris, would you be willing to, you're the founder of this program, if I recall correctly. Um, we, we, yes. Could you say something about how it came about or what, what prompted you to do it? As you know, uh, the idea came with uh, Susan, Susan Battle, that is uh, remain after uh, so many years of the main reference point in the United States, just to uh, contact her for uh, more information, detail. The idea come in, uh, when you have been there in the year of uh, 1995, just we are close, uh, we are close to the anniversary. Huh? 
and uh, I I I spent many times, as you know, in uh, IPS conference, following mainly for a long period uh, the activity of IPS, and uh, the idea came uh, just for uh, the necessity to uh, to offer the occasion to uh, increase uh, the time that uh, during a conference we spend uh, for a, a little period. Obviously, at the beginning, uh, the help of Disney Technology Inc. was very important for the economic support uh, because uh, the, the, the money uh, to reimbursement for fly come from this society. And uh, uh, for that reason, in the following year, when uh, stop the economic help from um, Linux Technology Inc. Also because we promote mainly the Starlab projector and many of the first uh, uh, teacher involved are from uh, this kind of tool of uh, instrument user. And uh, then uh, we change because uh, therefore I increase the number of uh, days uh, the week become two weeks, and I involve two other colleagues, uh, Simonetta, that remain our main reference point, very important, also because he's the first person that met the, the teacher, therefore is a very important moment uh, just to experiment the first lesson, the length of the lesson, and just to... Uh, take confidence with our country, the Italian school, and so on, very close to the, uh, usually the, the Rome, therefore the arrival point of each uh, teacher. And uh, then we involve also, I involve also the uh, Luciano from Gorizia. And uh, this is uh, another uh, collaborator for many, many years. Therefore, there are these three points. And uh, in the last year, we increase the number of uh, location thanks to the help of uh, Italian Planetary Association. And uh, therefore, that allow us the possibility to increase uh, the, the seat involved. And we try, we try to, uh, again, to, 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 to involve also uh, people, colleagues that are far from the normal itinerary. And that means uh, cost, uh, obviously, of transport, but uh, the National Association help us. And also, since uh, uh, this year, we receive, uh, as the organizer of uh, US Week uh, and uh, the, the program in Germany, $1,000 uh, is help from IPS to cover the uh, the fly the reimbursement that allow us the possibility to use the money for involve more Italian colleagues to pay for example also far location because it's clear if in in the case that we involve also Sicily or Sardinia uh, that mean uh, that increase the cost uh, of of, uh, of the transport therefore this uh, IPS. Uh, uh, support, uh, economic support, help us to do this choice. And therefore, uh, not probably in the next year, but uh, in the following, I hope to increase. Next year will be a new uh, city we, that will be involved, uh, will be uh, Florence, and uh, probably also Dolomite Mountains. Uh, we we expect a confirmation about that. But uh, And the last stop will be in Padova. Therefore, another historical city, wonderful place, uh, the memory of uh, the stay of uh, Galileo, and also will be the end of the two weeks uh, with our national conference. Therefore, the teacher will be involved also during our national conference. That uh, will be a purpose also for the future, but depend on the site. In, this, uh, in uh, 2024, we are able to do that. Therefore, uh, these are our program, and I am uh, I am very happy that also Susan uh, was able to begin this experience with the help of a colleague, Italian colleague like Shona, the same experience in United States because uh, for many many years during IPS conference 
during IPS uh, council meeting, I said, why your, your association don't try to do a similar experience? And after so many, many years, uh, finally also United States begin and also uh, the colleague from Germany, but uh, any country uh, can, uh, can- You really uh, started it. something. Yeah. Yeah, when and when the the U.S. started to do the the week in the U.S., I was always pushing some of the former Italian hosts to try to take advantage of, of it to come to the U.S. So I was I was thrilled when uh, I hosted Elena from Padua this this past summer, and it was really lovely to to have her um, uh, come and stay. And then I, I did get to actually in fall because I was on a family trip. Uh, I did get to go and, and catch up with her in Padua for a little while as well. So that was nice. Um, so, and stayed with her family and it was just really lovely. Um, so yeah, highly, again, highly encourage folks to take advantage and to offer to host, um, be it from Italy or other places, uh, you know, wherever you host someone from you, you learn so much from that experience. It's really wonderful. We have one, uh... one, one thing I'd like to say too, that I, I failed to mention um, you know, a lot of times when you get together with planetarium people, the conversation goes to technology. And it was very refreshing being in Italy, where only one facility even had a digital projector. Um, so I would say the the lessons that I was doing and that my colleagues were doing, I wouldn't call them old fashioned, I would call them foundational. Um, and, you know, de-emphasizing the tech for um, education and understanding. We actually have three people from Italy on this uh, call, and I was wondering, Alessandra, if you wanted to say anything uh, and make any comments. Yes, well, um, we, we are still in touch with uh, two, uh, two scientists who took part in that program. One is Andy. Uh, he was uh, really a good instructor for my classes. Huh? And um, before COVID, we met Mr. Kevin Milani, who was also the winner of the two weeks in Italy. And uh, well, um, we thank them so much and we are looking forward to meeting the new winner of the two weeks in Italy. It will be really great for all of our students. Hmm? I, I will say that I rarely um, feel like a rock star, but around Alessandra's students, I felt like an absolute rock star. <laughs> and uh, um, Elena, did you want to make any comments? Well, um, I know about this organization because I'm Alexandra's daughter. So that's why I'm here connected in Zoom. And well, what can I say? I met Kevin, I think five or six years ago. I'm not sure how much time, how many years ago. And it was really lovely to meet somebody from the USA. So somebody from far away and to talk in English and to learn something new. So yes, that would be lovely to meet other people. Yes. Okay, I think it's almost time to sign off. If there's any uh, last questions, uh, I'll be turning off the recording. So Andy, say, say happy birthday to your wife. Yes, I will. <laughs> it's my wife's birthday today. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks again, Andy. Another yeah, of one more thing I wanted to say because I, you know, I've been on this PPA um, idea committee. You know, uh, I I went to Italy and I wrote this in the report, but I didn't start out saying I was from America or California. I talked about uh, the indigenous people that lived on the North American continent long, long before. It was called America. Um, it may have been named after an Italian, but uh, I I paid tribute to the indigenous cultures uh, of America and 
the students were very, very intrigued by by that. And um, yeah, it was one small, small part of my uh, presence over there, but um, I felt really good about um, about doing that. Great. Okay. Well, thanks again. Thanks everybody for coming. This has been wonderful. I'm